or happy Christmas, Merry Christmas to you and your family, by the Merry, way, as well. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you as well. Um, it's nice to have you again. Um, those who don't know James, uh, James Hutch, the historian, the educator, the Kabudo enthusiast and martial artist. Um, if you want to know more, um, find the previous podcasts when we talk more about his history and stuff. Yeah. And how are you, James, today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Coming off a bit of a, a bit of travel and a bit of sickness, but yeah, otherwise good. And you? Yeah, I'm very, very well. Uh, early morning, but very well. Um, I'm going to hit you with a big one straight, start sure. straight away. Uh, because uh, a couple of my posts, and as you probably have seen, uh, uh, trolls woke up just I had before a couple Christmas. This morning, yeah. <laughs> um, I, what yeah. What do you think about the deadly karate techniques? Um, as we know, all martial arts, and not only martial arts, but fighting, it can be deadly. Um, but what's from the history stance um, point of view? Is what's evident is that uh, actually karate was practiced as a deadly art. Because for me, self-defense is everything against deadly. Am I allowed to say bullshit? Allowed to say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, it's a great marketing tool. So, so the early, I'll talk evidence, right? We have mm-hmm. evidence. We've got two pieces of evidence um, that are pertinent to that question. The first is uh, Matsumura. Now, Matsumura was the, the bodyguard, as you know, to the king. Mm-hmm. In his seven precepts, he talks about um not really looking for a fight but using it as self-defense and this is coming from a guy who's would be the modern equivalent of the sas mm-hmm. uh, who goes in gets stuff out so this idea that karate was sort of practiced to go around and kill people that's not historically grounded okay matsumura who we said who i said he had the right to protect the king he didn't promote it Mm-hmm. Kian's family, who also were protecting the king, also didn't promote it. So this idea that karate was this, um, in its public's face, and it was this full-fledged, uh, dim mock, mystical silliness. No, there's no grounds for that, Les. Um, was, were there aspects within it which were deadly? I think so. I mean, of course, yeah. If you look at some... Some of the, I mean, even this is going to sound terrible, but some of the kata would seem to suggest like there's neck breaks. and, mm-hmm. and um, But remember in Japan at this time, Okinawa in particular, was a pretty violent place. So street fights were really common. Mm-hmm. Like we have reports from 1905 talking about the street fights. Uh, but you don't have a lot of reports of people getting killed. You have reports of people going to jail for assault. The only people who had a right to kill with impunity up until the Meiji Restoration were the samurai class. So the average person wouldn't be going around killing people. So, yeah, I don't know where that story got started, but it's it's historically the only people who had the right to do that were the samurai. And even that was used with extreme caution, mm. extreme caution. That's, what, in fact, what I posted the other day, your host um, reminded me of the 47 Ronin story. Mm-hmm. And how that has been mythologized that these guys went and got revenge. That's actually not historically accurate. Because uh, there is no, sorry, go ahead. There is there's a couple of stories in the book saying that, oh yeah, he killed. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember. I'm terrible with names and you mm-hmm. know um history, but uh, somebody suggested there's two stories that, that somebody punched somebody and killed one of the teachers, maybe Matsumura. Um, mm-hmm. But that was uh, said he died a couple of days, uh, ah, so maybe a yeah. couple of days after. So I don't see that as a evidence of deadly karate, because even Motobu in his books was heavily relying on the Chinese medicine and, you know, punch somebody at 12 o'clock in the midday and they're going to die three o'clock in two weeks time. Um, so that's kind of not uh, reliable evidence. And even if you look on this modern self-defense, not many people die um, after punching, right? Yeah, well, that was that's the second piece I was talking. We have an older document. I think uh, it was translated by. I think it's gone, uh, and it's about a, a father giving advice to his son. The father's the page in the, the the upper class in in Okinawa, and he says to his son, "Yeah, practice martial arts every day because it's good for the spirit, but make sure you're better at organizing and good at politics mm-hmm. and good at your Chinese calligraphy. That's far more important. I think that comes from the 1600s, 1800s." Um, so yeah, this whole like martial arts died, started to die 
as a killing art started to die after the Battle of Sakigahara. Because remember, the Tokugawa regime, mm-hmm. they established the samurai as a caste system, and only they could fight. So they, And they also wanted peace. And so people, again, forget this, that Japan was one of the most peaceful places between, say, 1612 up until the late 1800s. Mm-hmm. One of the most peaceful places on, on the planet. So, I, yeah, Les, it's always a weird thing. Like... <laughs> And it, I mean, the fact that it's martial art, karate is not a martial art. It was never meant to be used in the battlefield, mm-hmm. right? Say with Kobe, though, Okinawa and Kobe. If you want to do martial arts, you have to do old school jujitsu, which is instead like, you know, judo, for example, where you're on top of the guy and he's face up. You know this, you're mm-hmm. a judo guy. Yeah. He's face up and he's breathing. Old school jujitsu, you're almost trying to get the guy always on his face mm-hmm. into the mud. Um, but those are complete, they're completely different systems, like completely. Mm. One was meant for use in the battlefield, which would be martial and karate is a civilian or hand to hand combat stuff. You know, that I mean that's kind of where we are at now. I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah, it's it's a bit of a silly Yeah, but as well, so, you know, to, to kill people, um I think you have a lot of practice, but self defense uh, hmm. It is to get get away from there, right? So by the de- definition, people say, "Oh, you have to master it for years and years and years." Oh, it's a it's an ant- antithesis of a self defense, isn't it? Who would be well, doing it's also the... the antithesis of a, a martial art? How <laughs> long can you train as troop? Okay, we're going to take you into twenty five, and by the time you're fifty five, you'll be a master, and you'll be able to go. No, it was five years. You're done, maximum. See, that's the whole issue around Shihan licenses, right? You've heard of Shihan licenses. Yeah, yeah. I am one, apparently. Yeah, right. Okay, so Shihan license essentially means, even in the old schools, the Ryuha systems, a Shihan license means you have learned everything. Now go away and essentially be an adult and be responsible. Mm. So you actually should have thousands of Ryuha. Mm-hmm. So this idea that was post-1945 with the... 38, maybe where the Yuha system became really solidified, was really an economic move. It had nothing to do with martial arts. Mm-hmm. And I hate using that frame, martial arts. I just don't know a better word. I use Budo. Mm-hmm. I don't use martial art or any of that silliness, civilian self-defense, because it's not quite civilian. I use the word Budo, which just means the way of the warrior, for lack of a better word. Warriors open to any class. The hobby. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's It's... So yeah, the, the, yes, there are killing techniques. As, uh, they, as, as they are in any movement we do. Boxing doing. has them. They're, they're <laughs> legal in boxing. They're illegal in judo. They're illegal in whatever martial art. Wrestling has it too. You pick a guy up and you hmm. slam him on the back of his neck. Game over. It's illegal. Yeah. Because they're a sport. They've been sportified. But I think, Marsh, you know, circling back to your question, the idea of self-defense. Yeah, the whole purpose of self-defense is to not be there. Mm, exactly. You know, Funakoshi's um, Karate ni Sente Nash, right? I mean, it's always trying, to, there is no first strike in, in Karate. Well, okay. That's sort of what it means, but you have, Japanese can't be read alone. It can't be, it has, it's a high context language, right? Mm-hmm. What that statement actually means, and that's an interesting, is don't be an asshole. That's exactly what, in the context, if you read all the other, stuff he's saying in that short 20 whatever 28 principles whatever it is what he's saying is if you go it's got to be read in context i mean don't be an asshole Mm. don't go looking for a fight don't be a jerk don't hurt people's feelings sorry i'm swearing a lot but this i I find this stuff really frustrating (laughs) i I mean and it it misses so much out of what martial art budo is supposed to be Mm. as as well Mm. i i think it comes from that promotion on the modern traditional karate i love that um that expression modern traditional karate and the one punch one kill which i think uh, for me it is just try to knock out people as hard as you can but it's not literally mean you go and kill people with one punch because how often does that happen yeah okay so that one kinch one punch one kill now don't ask me to give you the exact dates is actually taken for the sword system of the Satsuma, the Satsuma clan mm-hmm. in Japan. And the Satsuma were the ones who took over Ryukyu. And in their sword system, they're the only mm-hmm. ones, they have one strike, one kill. Now you need to check out though their, their training system because they're like, 
crazy when they attack. So what happened was their motto of one strike, one kill, and they they took it in Okinawa. It was overtaken in one, one fist, one pull. Nobody believes that in reality. It was it was a total again total propaganda. No, no, it's it's that is the the the, the motto of the Satsuma. Oh, okay. Jigen Jigen Ryu. Mm-hmm. That's their motto, but it's one strike with a sword, not one strike with a fist. And if you see them training, you're like, oh yeah, okay, I, I get it. Mm-hmm. Like they're crazy, powerful, focused attack. So that's where that comes from. Yeah, I, I don't know where that got transferred to karate, but it's understandable because the Satsuma were the ones who took over Okinawa. Because uh, as well, people, you know, we we've, we've been all told that um, karate was for. Uh... Uh, farmers and people and, and stuff like that but in <laughs> in, rea- in rea- reality it was for the um the higher caste wasn't it okay, you know, we had yeah. the matsumura patrons and stuff like that and the Correct. regular farmer didn't have a time to training anyway so be doing farming absolutely so it was karate in its pre-1904 right so before Kennington mm-hmm. was primarily for an upper class uh, elite to practice who were either up, and this is my theory, I can't really find any proof of it yet, they had two roles. Either they were working directly with the the hickey system or the the, the defense system in the Shirty Castle. So they were similar to the SAS, if they were bodyguards. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was another system, and this is mine, and I can't really prove it yet, but it's it's becoming more clear. There were also the guys who were operating as bodyguards in the boats, between the various kingdoms in that region, between Korea, China, and Japan, um, because of the Waku, the the pirates. And they also had it as well. Mm. And so that's where I think you had sort of two different, not different, but two approaches to martial arts. Because the whole Shiri Nahate stuff, that's all made up too. Like people don't realize that. That was kind of invented in the 1930s as a way to explain X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. You know? So I think you had two. How the farmers got the tools, again, we have fairly clear evidence when the the, the second sons would move out and become local landlords. Because we're raiding, they would probably, everybody in Okinawa was part of a militia. Mm-hmm. So they had to train with some form of weapon. Um, and that's probably, so you have the, the odori, the dancing mm-hmm. uh, of martial arts, you know, where you have village, what's it called? Murabo, like uh, village bow festivals. Mm-hmm. And so they have all these things that look, but they're really basic bow techniques. Mm-hmm. You know, the other one you'll see this great myth is that in, in, in Japanese or in the martial arts of Okinawa, hidden, there are hidden within the dancing techniques, karate. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. There's, there's no evidence for that at all. The guy who came up with that in 1908, there's no evidence for it. But it's romantic, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's nice. It's, it's like saying Irish dancing is about kicking people when they're down, right? You can say the same. You can see whatever you like, but it's not in there. Well, it's it's obviously a art of shin kicking, isn't it? <laughs> no idea. Shin kicking, maybe. I think there's a martial art shin kicking, right? And I think it's in Scotland or Ireland or something. Yeah, I think that's slightly, you know, it's. So no, you're right. It wasn't an elite class who practiced it. The, the poor people wouldn't have had the time, and um, nor would they necessarily have been healthy enough. Mm. And then when it came, and it's really interesting that when it came out from behind a veil in 1904, it was brought into national schools for children, right? Mm-hmm. So elementary kids were learning it, but it was brought in as part of the health program. That's really interesting mm. to help build up their bodies because their bodies weren't very well taken care of you know okinawa was and remains the poorest uh, province in japan and then when it transferred to the mainland it's really interesting it went to the universities mm-hmm. so it was the elite the elite elite again who was learning karate so shotokan shitoru in the universities that was about five percent of the japanese population so it was never diffuse not like in the mainland not like um kendo and uh, karate or judo which were put into the regular school systems so yeah and um, yeah, so I've got the, as well other tricky question is about the modifying karate. So I, I'm firm belief that uh, kata and karate is for you, not the other way. 
but if you want to preserve like you're preserving uh, stuff from Chitoryu mm. and uh, Kobudo um, it's it's fine by me but people have a, a huge problem with oh you're doing kata your way you shouldn't be doing that like that but I think that's the traditional model isn't it I don't know I my, my opinion last time I spoke to you I said I don't think you should change kata right because mm. it's been changed so much I am starting to, the more I read and the more I think about it, um, I think we're giving it karat, kata too much emphasis. Mm. There should be <clears throat> far more one-to-one -one training, um, like what man-to-man -man training or whatever, person-to-person yeah. -person training. I think that was probably more common. And the whole idea that kata, well, to say that katas haven't changed is a total myth. Look at there's 15 versions of Basai, right? Yeah. About 20,000 versions of Seisan. So, you know, we know Funakoshi trained in with Seisan, and we know the people he trained with. Who, And if you look at their Kata, Seisan, and his version, they look quite different. So to try to say that Kata hasn't changed is wrong. It has changed. Secondly, what's the meaning of the Kata? It's a person moving around, look like they're dancing by themselves. So in, in, in Japanese systems, kata is a two-person drill. Mm. So therefore, by logic, the kata in Okinawa would seem to be some form of individual training where you remember or recall certain techniques or yeah, kihons that you learn in training. Now, what those purposes were, I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't no. have an idea. I think, you know, they were probably two-person self-defense techniques. and mm -hmm. Yeah, so my opinion of that is, but you're talking about, 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 more about people changing the kata, right? Mm -hmm. like, well, not, not necessarily changing, but just expressing the kata, the way your body works with it, right? Because I try yeah. to sometimes do... Uh, traditional version and just mm. my body says no it's like you know do, do mm. it in kibadachi my knees don't like kibadachi so mm -hmm. i do shikodachi and mm. i don't see the problem with it the, the frame no is problem. yeah but people say oh anatomically different you know for different purposes yeah okay how much you can focus on that during the fight <laughs> it doesn't make sense does it no it makes no sense like why would you do a martial arts that's bad for your body exactly and as you get older, I mean, I'm in the same boat, Les, because of the hip situation mm. we talked about. I'm forced, my shikodachi is much higher than it used to be because I can't get there. Now I'm working and getting down lower again because it's good flexibility. Mm. But katas, those are what that's, you're talking minor changes. I, I see those as surface changes. Okay. Mm. Kiba versus shiko. Okay. Yeah. Different, you know, like naihanshi. You see some people do it in shikodachi, some people do it in kibadachi. Mm. What's your purpose of Shiko Kibadach? What's your like what are you remembering? Like what's the purpose of this? I have a good friend Joe Smith, or Joe Smith, Joe Swift said perhaps karate we're given far too much emphasis to kata. And I'm beginning to think he's he's right on the money with that. Mm. Um yeah, I think it's just a tool, it's another tool in the it should be another tool in the arsenal. But when you're exporting something and you're trying to control it. So you can make money off it or ego off it, then yeah, there has to be only one right way because I've got the secret and you don't. Yeah, exactly. The secret, the favorite thing of karate secrets, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. To well, and you wrote about that in your second book, right? Second yeah, book. yeah, yeah. There's no secrets. And um, what I was gonna say, I was saying something. Had a chain of thought there um, about changing the kata as well. But I, I know, but you know, I'm I'm on a lost boat anyway because I'm from a Kyokushin background. So what do we know about kata, right? Our katas yeah, well, are so changed that uh, it's not even karate anymore. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, okay. So Kyokushin's really interesting. I, probably you, we shouldn't get into this because it what well, it, it's fairly controversial, and the evidence is becoming more and more clear that. Um, God, I gotta be careful how I say this because. Okay, so Kyokushin traces its roots to Miyagi system of Gojiru, right? Oh, and Shotokan. Shotokan, he had Nidan from Funakoshi, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, but mostly the, the katas you, the folks do. But the problem is, is oof, 
let's just say there's beginning to become some evidence that the lineage of Gojuru from which Kyokshin comes from mm -hmm. is in and itself questionable. Well, there's a lot oh, of I'm... people, a lot, lot of people saying that the Gogen um, wasn't very fair and didn't learn much, didn't he? Yeah, I mean that's the whole. He claimed he claimed titles he was never awarded, mm. and then he passed them on to other people. Again, it comes back to what do you mean by karate? Is Kyokshin karate? Don't know. Does it work, mm. y'all? If you ever <laughs> been kicked by Kyokshin guys, are got in close. And, you know, this whole idea that they all have big egos hasn't been my experience. In fact, mm. I find some of the Kyokushin guys quite among the most polite people on the planet because they have been punched in the face, or when well, not punched in the face, kicked in the head, and, you know. Um, so they know what it's like to get hit. Exactly. Um, so I I think Kyokushin's its own thing. We talked about this before. Mm. Personally, I think Kyokushin's its own thing. I think, oh, you know, Masoyama... I forget his Korean name, but I think Masayama kind of looked at what was going on in the university system and went, yeah, that's fine, but can we make it a little bit more like uh, full contact? Mm. So, yeah, I think so. But yeah, the yeah, classes look pretty horrible, don't they? Well, well I don't know. <laughs> Those marshes to the legs look pretty sore, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it... Um interesting you know because my teacher was uh, always keen to show the traditional versions although we had the, always the, the kyokushin is our base mm -hmm. we already had the modified them and uh, it was a mixture of a kyokushin kata version of kata mixed with the traditional ones mm -hmm. um to make them work and i finding um some of the moves of kyokushin are uh, let's say not very useful because it's kicking to the high high to mm -hmm. the head and stuff like that so it's emphasis is on the mobility and uh, stretching but if you take that out i think there are some good things uh, when i'm using them and i play with them but i think it's with every movement if you want to you you find the uh, connections there and mm -hmm. uh you know bunkai is just uh, whatever you can make out of it i don't think so there is uh, one only true bunkai and to be honest we don't know if there was any bunkai anyway to it so yeah, well i think we keep circling back to the same issue and again this is what joe was saying i, I I'm, I'm, i've been wrestling with this one I, I i think he's right are we do we overemphasize the role of kata in in karate and I'm, I'm, the answer might be yes and no it might be yes and it's become the be all and the end all right mm -hmm. which doesn't really make sense if you're talking from either self-defense or the civilian self-defense martial art individual training doesn't make any sense really outside of some other benefits to the body and learning mm. you know, correct st stance um but and that would be the 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 um the, the opposing argument would be yeah it does teach you certain or remind you of certain stances and you know cultivates the the spirit cultivates what we call body posturing you know, it's kind of like shadow boxing in a way. Mm. Similar, not exact same, but similar. It kind of gets the body warmed up and it helps you remember maybe stuff you learned. You didn't have daily access to your teacher either. People forget about that. Mm. You know, it wasn't until the, the 1930s, really. When, no, 1920, 1918, when Miyagi formed this group, the Karate Kenkyu Kai, in a, in, with a number of other teachers in Okinawa, that there was actually daily training. And it wasn't by Iruha system. It was by let's do karate. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, I, I just, yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you cheat, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, my, my, in my school, we do kata. We get rid of the kihon completely, nearly. That was one, that's going to be one of the questions my podcast I'm going to be um, diving into. Um, mm -hmm. And we're using a kata as a kihon practice because our system is based on on kata as a progression so every mm -hmm. uh, every grade you do a kata um mm -hmm. and we decided that you know it's just better to do partner work instead of having kihon than kata and and mixing air and do you do groundwork too i'm assuming you do because of your background we, we do some uh, but my, my my philosophy is uh know what to do on the floor but get up as soon as possible right 
Because it's interesting. I was just reading a, doing some reading of some articles and it talked about a meeting between um, Kano Sensei from the Kodokan and Miyagi Sensei in Okinawa. Mm-hmm. And in there, Kano's very, very clear. Like he was surprised and he actually wrote this how good, a high, high level, the ground techniques and the throwing techniques of karate were. And this is in 1930, 1928. He was surprised. He actually oh. wrote how good the throwing and the ground techniques of karate were. Oh, that's interesting. That's where, gonna, exactly. Where that's did gonna, that disappear to? That's going to upset some people. There's no well, no techniques it, in... <laughs> no, it's not true. It's not true. I can actually oh. give you a sec. It's I, I just, it's in here. It's in this book, which is a whole bunch of translations of articles. And it's very clear. Um, he, um, yeah, he was really in awe of how, how advanced the techniques were. Well, because they had the shima or tegumi, whatever you want to call it. That's another yeah. term which upsetting people, tegumi. Um, but, you know, every culture on earth have a wrestling techniques because that's what we do when we're children. You don't see children punching each other. You see children rolling because it's safer. Yeah. Well, and yeah, if you're not, if you're not an experienced fighter, you're going to try, well, you get knocked out or you're going to grab, right? That's, mm. Or if you can run away, obviously that you can do that first, but if you can't, you're going to grab because the hand is not, unless you've trained it. Like even boxers wrap their hands. Mm. Like, you know, it's not as a fist. It's not particularly useful. Open hand is completely different. Mm. Yeah, that's I, the other thing about kata. We talk about kata. Look how many times in a kata your fists are actually closed. It's not that often. Yeah. I actually did a study of chitoru katas a while ago, and I think it was less than twenty percent of the time. Most of the time in katas, your hands are open. Now it might look as a block, but is that mm. a block or is that a shito or is it a a, a choke? You know. It's so that's what, quite interesting too. Yeah, it's whatever you want to be. To be. Yeah, whatever you see, right? Which is why, to go back to kata arguments, I would say each kata is actually a system. I don't believe, like Seisan, for example, or Hangetsu, whatever it's called in, in, in different systems, or Basai, or mm-hmm. Chinto. I think if you actually look at those, they're probably pretty, pretty deep. And you don't actually need more than two, mm. three katas, maybe, in your life. Thank you. That's what we that's what we do in ours. You go to the black belt and you should choose three that you're studying and you want to do and the rest yeah. is just remember them. Yeah, because somebody else like you and I have a different body type, right? Mm. So I might be good at X kata, you might be good at Y kata, but only in the fact that it Y kata helps less remember what he needs to remember his body type, or not his body type, his personality. I hate that body type argument. And, and James is a different personality, and so that kata works better for his strengths. Mm. A bit. You know, so, definitely. Yeah, it's just too much. You see these systems with like seventy-eight kata. Okay, that's exercise. That's not. That's not civilian self-defense. Unless your katas are two seconds long, like they are in the choreo. Mm. You know, so. Moving, yeah, moving, moving, moving away from the kata, we, we can spend all days um, talking about it. Um, you started a very interesting thing doing, uh, you recording your thoughts during the driving. Uh, How is that going? Because uh, uh, karate people are very um, sensitive. What do you, what's the feedback on your interesting, uh, interesting. thoughts recording? Yeah, I only share it with a certain number of people. I did that just because I had some ideas of, i want to actually start conversations I, I don't think we talk enough anymore in karate we have <laughs> we've lost sight of the big story i think which is and it doesn't matter which camp you're in but I, i'll pick on one camp because that would be i know that number, number of people in your circles mate so the whole what's it called practical karate camp mm-hmm. i'd say that they're, they're missing about two-thirds of the story of what karate is mm-hmm. Um, does karate always have to be practical? Why can't it just be about well-being of yourself? Like you, you use it for well-being as well. So why can't it be about that? Why can't it be like moving Zen or why can't it be, um, about keeping your flexibility, keeping your muscle nutrition going, keeping your tendons strong? Why does it have to be practical? Whatever that means. 
isn't that practical anyway? But you know, if you're getting in there and pounding somebody in the head all the time, okay. Yeah, I think I think it's all karate, all activities in life. It like it's like you know, a bit of a religion, right? Like food, either yeah. you're vegetarian or not. My camp is the best, and I think people losing that <laughs> that sight of um, bigger picture, like you said. You know, I see that as well. You know, uh, with practical karate, they're getting so obsessed with the self defense, everything is self defense, that you're getting paranoid. Yeah, and that would honestly, I again, I, I'm not in that circle um, as much as you would be, but that would be my concern. Mm. We kind of, and now we're going to go full circle. I just don't understand why we can't just enjoy each other's technique, get together and say, hey, this is what we're doing, this is what we're doing, that you're happy doing that, I'm happy doing this. Why do I have to be right? Mm. That's why That's why I'm in that circle. I am the one who is on the sports edge of the self-defense and um, I try to remind them that you know there are other things to do than just uh, protect yourself yeah like I, I myself and so maybe it's yourself a little bit I don't know your whole story but maybe not maybe not but one of the reasons I got into karate was to stop fighting mm. you know because I knew was I, I shared this with you before because it wasn't going in a good direction I'm not the only one like I know other people uh, Mike Clark for example who got mm. into karate as a means to when that red mist comes down, some of us have it, right? And it's not a good thing. No. And karate helps you see through that. If you wanted to, it doesn't have to. It can help you see through that red mist. And Yeah, I, I uh, think that's the beauty of karate. It can be whatever you want it to be. Oh, right. That's, that's yeah. funny. Um, you said that the, you are working on a book. Can you share, because we've got only a few minutes left, um, sure. can you share about the, the book? Yeah, so thank you for asking. So the, the book I'm taking one particular, and I want to give names out, um, I'm taking one particular <clears throat> person who founded a style in, in in karate, and I'm looking at his, it is a he, his early history in Okinawa. And in there, I'm trying to place him in answering some of the questions you have raised today and raised other times um, about some of the myths that have been built up about him and yet missing the incredible social history in, in which karate and he in particular was living during this time frame. And so I think some people would be quite angry because I dispelled a number of the myths. Um, but I don't do it out of I don't do it out of malice. I'm trying to say, well, look, in real life, when we put on our big boy pens, uh, his achievement was actually phenomenal. So I just finished, before I was talking to you, I just finished the section where he's just buried some children, of his mm. children. He's just, you know, and that was never featured in the story. I mean, that's how, and he's a young man at the, when this happens. Um, and for me to go through and see the pictures, because I have some pictures of those children who he lost. Yeah, it just reminds you that like, he was a person. He was, a, he was a human being and he, to lose two children as a young man, is that's got to really yeah, change. Your, you know, you don't imagine that till you don't have a children, you can imagine that. But when the children comes and that worry sets in that, you know, the worst thing ever is to lose your child. It, it changed perspective, isn't it? And, and to, to, to rob that man of that reality is that's, unconscionable as far as I'm concerned because mm. that was the reality for most people living in Okinawa they lost children, they lost loved ones because they were so poor um, when they came to Japan they were treated terribly so to lose that social history is is to do us all shame I think mm. so that's what I'm writing, I'm trying to put and dispel some of the myths as well or the, not the myths, but some of them are myths but also give context to the larger stuff that was going on, like Kano Sensei. I talk about the Kano. Mm -hmm. you know, I read her post yeah, even just yesterday from somebody who, who should know better uh, that Kano first came into contact with uh, karate in 1922. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Mm -hmm. 1911 is the first time the kids show up at the, the Kodokan and perform karate in front of him. And then they go visit him again in 1918 um, and actually stay at his house. And we know that. Like we have the kids, so this idea that, oh, it wasn't until 1928 that, uh, you know, when he finally met Funakoshi. No, that's not true. 
you knew mm. about it long before. So I talk about that in the book as well. Uh, do I you, talk about the, the Waco as well. Mm -hmm. The pirates you, and how that's been forgotten. Yeah, so good. Do you, do you know when it's going to be released? Well, that's what I was asking. Anyways. So I'm about 35,000 words now, I mm -hmm. think. I've got about another 10 to go. I'd say I'm aiming for the next six months. I need to go, get it through. I'm going to have people like Mario McKenna and read it and stuff and just correct it for me. Um, nice. I'm hoping in the next six months. I'm looking uh, forward to uh, it. Thank you. No, thanks. Yeah, I'll let you know when it comes out and I'll send you a copy. Um, but I'm just trying to give history or karate its history, not its mm. its myths, not its lies. Um, and, and again, the whole the whole it's only two sentence I make in there about the the Kano being very clear that karate when he met Miyagi, I think it was 1922, or can't remember the exact date. When he met Miyagi, it was he wrote a letter back to Tokyo saying. You know, holy cow, these karate guys, they are really pretty good on the ground and they know how to do neiwaza, which is groundwork, and they know how to tatuaza, throwing techniques. Mm -hmm. And he talks about how good they are. That's hey, coming from Kano. That's coming yeah. from Kano. So you, you're going to cha <laughs> change the face of karate soon. Everybody's going to be doing, we are the predecessor of PJJ. Well, but there were throws. I mean, you can't, how can you not mm -hmm. see throws in Basai? I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I don't get that. I mean, no, I know we're talking to convert. But this is the man, the big voice, and and the cross pollination between karate and, and judo has been, it's really interesting how karate influenced his katas as well. So I talk a little bit about that in the book, but that's only a, a page or so. But there's so much good stuff starting to come out now that's being translated. You know, guys like Joe Swift, Mary McKenna, they've always been doing it, but now you have like guys, um, Alex Bennett, who's a mm -hmm. professor here. And the more and more we get the real accurate history portrayed, I think the more and more we start to really appreciate what those pioneers went through and survived mm. to, to give us the gift that we have, you know, and to make our lives better as well. You, James, got a uh, really good blog as well. Could you share the blog? Because I've got two minutes left. Oh, two minutes. Oh, jamesmhatch.com. But I haven't put anything up in a while. I'll be putting stuff up again soon. But, I'm going to uh, translate the, the 1947 or 37 meeting, 36 meeting of, mm -hmm. you know, that big meeting where they accept it. I have a picture and everything. It's quite funny. It's like guys sitting around a table in a room having a chat with their mates. It's like, <laughs> it's not a big deal. <laughs> As it, really is. It, it just covers this. It's just, yeah, it's the original document. I mean, it's been translated elsewhere, but I just want to show the pictures of it now and just people will be like, oh, that's it. Yes, we don't even have that. So any yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I, I hope thank sorry you, that friend. sorry I've got only an hour, um, mm. but um, I'm sure we can catch up soon, maybe after Christmas, and talk mm. more about your book um, in detail when you be ready to share stuff and and do some promotion on that, because okay, I'm really thank looking, you, looking forward to it. <laughs> All right, okay. let's just have a great Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yourself. See you yeah. later. Bye bye. You got the work. Yeah. Bye bye.